I just might be in your hood. Fuck out of here, man. You dumbass niggas. You niggas are silly out here trying to look cute and shit, man. I just might be in your hood. Niggas wanna come and talk to me about all this dumb shit, nigga. Yo, 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 yo. What's going on, YouTube? Little fella checking in, man. I tell you. <laughs> I ain't get no love, man. No love. Can somebody show me some love, man? Can somebody show me some love. Anybody show me some love because I ain't definitely ain't getting it out here. Right now, currently, if you can see out the side window, I'm on the shoulder going 15 miles an hour. Um, I'm crawling to the nearest truck stop, which is about four more miles and the reason why the truck can still move but not move fast enough is because something's wrong with the transmission now it's either the transmission or the range control button or the splitter whatever you want to call it um, it's not acting properly so I have to burden people on this interstate I'm on here Riding down the shoulder trying to get to this truck stop to see what's gonna happen next. Luckily, this ain't my truck. I'm mean, just a loaner truck. So I talked to the owner of this truck. He said he's gonna make some phone calls. There is a um, a truck stop there, and that's what I'm aiming for. But I think that's the nearest shop area as well. You know, I really don't know why some people just don't get over. Does that ever really bother you? Knowing that somebody has their hazard lights and are in motion, and people still fail to recognize the emergency vehicle on the side of the shoulder. I don't get it. Some trucks are, are getting over, or some cars are getting over, but it seems like it takes a lot of brain power for them to use that turn signal and move. I don't know what it is. So, let me get down to this road, and when I get stopped, I'm going to see how this is going to turn out. I'm actually supposed to be in Texas by 7 p.m., and right now it's currently 3 p.m. I don't think that's going to happen. I'm currently at the shop, and the guy pulled it in. He played with the, the transmission, the high and low range. He listened. And uh, come to find out, the top, the high range end of the transmission is gone. It's clunking around when it's, when it's idling in high range. It's clunk, 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 clunking like that. So my high gears is gone. So I can't catch a break, y'all. I can't catch one at all. But I'm here to share analogy, y'all. Let you know what I do without here is real. I go through it. <laughs> I don't know why I go through it so hard, though. But uh, I'm next to a pilot, so more than likely, if you don't get nothing done here, which I don't think he is, the uh, owner already said that he'll probably end up getting the truck towed back to Mississippi. And they'll work on the transmission there for a lot cheaper. And uh, tow me out another truck to use. I don't know if it's going to be one of his trucks from uh, Mississippi um, or if it's going to be like from a rental place that's nearby. So, be down for a minute. Hopefully, I get back on the road. Well, I could think of it like this. It might be a tow truck that bring one of his other trucks out to me and then in the same breath take his truck back to the same place they left from. That would make sense. What do you think? So, we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm not sure how far I'm going to record this out, but stay tuned. Flashing forward, got word from the tow truck driver. My truck is almost here. It shouldn't be no more than like 20 minutes away. If anybody watched my loaner truck video, that's the truck that he's bringing. So it'll be a truck I've already been in before, which is good. So as soon as it show up, I'm gonna hook up to it. Hook back up to this FedEx load, keep it moving. Pray for me that my luck get better, y'all. For real. Because out here on the road, 
living this lifestyle. It's not as glamorous as people make it sound like until you live it. You know, becoming an owner operator, it's a whole different category. Keep that in mind. So, like, comment below. Tell me what you think. Have you ever had a truck breakdown before? Did you ever need to get a, a repower? Did you ever have to get another loaner truck? You had to stay in a hotel room for the night? How was your experience? Let me know I ain't the only one out here that goes through this, man. Because this is ridiculous. <laughs> Until then, um, I'll keep y'all updated. As far as my truck, I did call and talk to the guy. The, the insurance approved it yesterday, so the truck should be getting towed to the body shop Monday. And they're gonna get a start on it, so I cannot wait to get mine back, man. Can't wait. Now I'm jumping to a week later, and the reason being is because I had a lot going on last week, but I'm gonna put it all in this one video instead of making two separate videos to explain to y'all what happened with the whole tow truck situation and my transmission going out. It did uh, get towed back and the way it worked was the boss man who runs the company, not my business, but he had, if you see my first loaner truck video uh, where I was in the Coronado, he had a guy in Mississippi tow that truck all the way out to me in Arkansas. It took about five hours where I was sitting at. Dropped that truck off, put my stuff in that truck, and then he hooked up to the truck I was currently in. Towed it back to Mississippi. Put a brand new transmission in here. In the meantime, I still ran my FedEx load to Fort Worth. And then turned around and came back. About time Monday morning came. After I got back Saturday afternoon of course. Truck was ready to go. So I'm back in this truck now as you can see. First thing I noticed when they fixed the transmission. It still had a burning smell to it. And the mechanic was like man I drove it for a little bit. He's like you might have to put some air fresheners. Or spray some cologne or perfume. Or put some dryer sheets in there or something. <laughs> it was just bad. So. It was kind of funny. But it didn't take longer than the day to get the smell out of the, you know, coming in the truck. Wasn't much of a problem. I also called the body shop today, which is Friday. Mind you, it was a week later. To see what's going on and then during the week on a tuesday i actually physically stopped in i had a load or my fedex load canceled and i hooked back up to a flatbed and i did a run up to chicago of course cold as hell man i need my truck back i looked at it it was sitting there at the body shop but it wasn't in the bay i had to get some stuff out of it or whatever but i basically talked to him asked him what's going on he told me that they got the parts ordered that the insurance company already approved, but they're not going to start working on it until they can rip the hood off the radiator and get a whole good look at the front of that engine to make sure there's nothing else they need whatsoever. When that is determined, then they'll start working on it. This was Tuesday. I told him, when should I call, call you back? He said Friday. So now it's Friday. I called him Friday earlier. Uh, this afternoon to see where they was at and he told me they just pulled it in the shop probably around one so uh, I said well when should I call back now he said well sometime early next week to see where we at we're pulling it apart right now and we'll definitely know something by Monday what's going on and then starting to work on it or whatever the case is but it Everything goes smooth. It should be done by the end of next week. So I said, cool. That'll be perfect timing because I need it back by the end of the next week. <laughs> this is killing me, man. Look, if y'all ever go to the dealership and buy y'all trucks, 
whatever insurance y'all choose to get, make sure you add rental reimbursement. I kid you not. If I didn't have a loaner truck to use, even though I ain't making shit, I'm making 25% of what I was making in my truck right now for these past three weeks. It is killing me. But it's better than nothing. Get rental reimbursement. That way you can continue to make the same owner-operator money you was already making. Because if you have to rely on somebody else to get a loaner truck or not even work at all, you just got to sit there in a hotel for three weeks, that's going to kill you. You luckily if you have family around that's cool and all that but man i tell you the bills keep cycling around them jones don't stop i'm telling you i ain't gonna be able to survive like this longer than a week <laughs> at this pace man it, it just crazy what's been going on these past few months but other than that i'm making the best of it you know me man little fella always trying to keep a smile on my face yes i've been stressed out like hell but um I'm taking it day by day trying to get through it it's like everything keeps hitting me in my face and as you continue to watch my videos that i post you're going to see another bullshit thing i'm gonna post here within the next uh the next i say two to three weeks i uh, post it i was originally supposed to do it the weekend my truck got hit and i didn't have to reschedule it um for after christmas now nah, i ain't gonna be really want to do it after christmas because i don't know what's going on so I'm going to reschedule it the first week of January. So stay tuned for that, people. Um, I'm glad I was able to give you an update before I posted this video. I really was supposed to post it last week, but I was just too much going on. Trying to do FedEx um, uh, van line haul runs and then in between do flatbed runs too. I'm working my ass off. 25% of what I would have been making in my truck. It is crazy. Uh, I'm exhausted. But I had a little fun last weekend in between. Um, that helped out a lot. Other than that, y'all, everything's looking normal. So thanks for watching all the way to the end. Little fella checking out. I'll catch y'all on the next vid.